Hello, everybody. In this video, we're going to look at the first set of questions on the APCSP create task. So purpose, functionality, inputs, and outputs. All right, let's get going. So here are the questions you're going to be solving. In theory, they seem really easy, but less than 50% of the people got them right. Here are the two questions that you need to be careful on. So here's the first question. It asks about the overall purpose of the program. The stuff I'm about to show you, I'm pulling from a couple of YouTube videos put out by the AP board. All right, so for the first question about the purpose, the thing you want to answer is why and what problem does this solve? So I'm going to recommend that you put all your answers like this. The purpose of my program is to solve the problem of blank. And why? The first is this. The question is asking about the purpose of the program. So this helps you and that you recognize that, yes, I did answer this question. And it helps the grader by pointing out where exactly you've answered the question. The grader, by the time they're grading like 100 of these, eyes are glazed. They're going to be actually really grateful that you've pointed out where your answer is. And the second reason is that the AP board itself, in all its videos, after pointing out that everybody misses this question, suggests this form of the answer. They also suggest another form of the answer, which is the creative interest being pursued by this program is something. So that's another way you can do it if you want. The next question asks you to describe the functionality of the program. So that is not why are you making the program, but what or how is it working? So I recommend that you start every answer with the functionality of my program is, which makes things easier for you and the grader. All right, so as I said before, half the people missed this question. And the reason they missed this question, according to the AP board, is because they confused purpose and functionality. The purpose, it's the problem being solved or the creative interest being pursued, or why. And the function is the behavior of the program or how or what. So that can be confusing. I'll go over some examples that the AP board gave us. All right, so again, these are the AP board's examples. In some cases, I've transcribed or fleshed out some examples, but the link is in the description below if you want to look at the original video. The first example is a Connect Four game. The purpose is to solve the problem of facilitating and entertaining Connect Four experience. So this is why, as opposed to what, which is the functionality, which is how you move, where the pieces go, and so on and so forth. Now, there's some other information out there which suggests the AP board does not like you to make games, does not want you to say entertainment is your purpose. So I would suggest that you don't make something like Connect 4, don't make a straight up game. Their next example was a mouse clicking game. The problem it solves is the problem of slow reflexes. So that's why. And how, while well, you click on something, you get a certain score for how accurate you are. That's the functionality. Their next example was a maze game. And the problem it solves is the problem of entertaining the user. And as far as how it happens, you, you use the mouse, you avoid the walls, and so on and so forth. Again, this is a game. If you're able to, try to avoid making a straight game. Their next example was a movie suggestion program. This solves the problem of not knowing which movies to see. And the functionality, well, that's how it happens. It asks user questions, prints out answers based on what you said. The next example was something like a hang person game. I don't think it was exactly that, but close enough. The problem it's solving is the problem of needing to learn biology vocab words by playing an entertaining game. So I've highlighted this example because it's an example of where you can turn entertainment into edutainment. And that seems to be more favorably looked upon by the AP board. The next example was a red light, green light game. The purpose is entertainment. So again, if you can avoid this, please do. And the functionality is how it worked. The next example was a user music trend finder. The purpose or why was to solve the problem of helping users understand their music habit. And the functionality or what or how has to do with how it works. You input music, it gives you time to listen to, so on and so forth. The next project was a lyric inspirer. So the purpose or why is that it solves the problem of needing daily inspiration by printing music in song lines. And how? Well, you give it some lyrics and it randomly prints out lyrics daily. The next program was a politician info printer. The purpose or why is that it solves the problem of knowing who the person should vote for. And the functionality or what or how is you input a whole bunch of information that you want. It looks for its information and it spits out or prints out who should vote for. The next example was a game kind of like Jeopardy. The purpose was to solve the problem of needing to review for the chemistry exam. So that's the why. Again, this is edutainment, education plus entertainment, which is gonna go better for you with the graders. And the functionality, which is how it works, you click on a square, it asks questions, depending on whether it's a correct, you're gonna get some points. The last example that they give was a random data generator. And I made this next one up. It solves the problem of needing random data for a different program that reviews concepts learned in AP stats, which would be a purely educational purpose. And the functionality, well, you input a range, some characteristics, and the program spits out some random data in a list. All right, to summarize all that, when you're answering the question about the purpose, be sure to answer why and answer what problem does this solve. And if you can't put your answer into this form, really think hard if that's the answer you want. When you answer the question about functionality, 
Usually that's a little bit more straightforward. Just answer what happens and how it happens. The last question from the set I think is the easiest to answer. And all you gotta do is say the input of my program is from, maybe it's a keyboard, maybe it's from the mouse, mouse click or mouse movements. Maybe it's from an online data source like Twitter. Maybe it's from a file. Maybe it's from a microphone. All you have to do is say the input of my program is from, and again, that makes it clear to you that you've answered the question and clear to the grader. It gives the grader a spot as to where to look for your answer. As far as the output of your program, just say the output of my program is something. Maybe it's a printout to screen. Maybe the character moves one way or the other when you move the mouse. Maybe it makes some sort of sound. Maybe it saves to file, any sort of thing. Based on what the AP board said in their videos, this is one of the easier questions to get. Just be explicit. All right, so here are some examples. I recommend that you follow the formula. How is that input or output coming and what is it? So in the mouse speed click game that we had before, the input is from my mouse. That's how and what is it? We're clicking on the targets. The output of my program is the score and it's displayed graphically on the screen. In a hang person game, the input of my program is from the keyboard, so that's how. And what is it? It's letter guesses. The output of my program will be either the guest letter or an underscore, so that's what and it will be displayed as text on the screen, and that's how. In a translator program, the input will be from the microphone, that's how, and what, it's gonna be a voice with words to translate. And the output of my program will be computer-generated voice, so that's what. I'll put it by speaker, and that's how. Finally, a project could be a form letter editor, where the input of my program is a file, that's how, and what, it's gonna be the letter contents with original name and pronouns. And the output of my file is another file. So again, that's how with substituted in names and changed pronouns. With these last two examples, I just wanted to show that it is possible to do things other than printouts to screen. Printouts to screen will probably be the most common output, but it's not the only thing that you can do. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.